Welcome to Merkaba Chakras, where we talk Buddhism in the fifth dimension. Welcome to another episode of Merkaba Chakras podcast. Today, I get the delight to talk to UFO researcher and author Preston Denton. Now, Preston's recent book, Onboard UFO Encounters, is one of almost two or actually almost two th- dozen books about his UFO research. I think the last count he had 30 books. So you're probably wondering, Vaughn, why are we talking to UFOs on po- this podcast about Buddhism and the fifth dimension? Well, the Buddhist folklore about the golden age of interstellar humanity includes, quote, quote, alien souls that incarnated as humans to help build the fifth dimension. So they are already living among us as your family and as your friends. So with that, let's welcome Preston to Merkaba Chakras. Preston, welcome. (laughs) Thanks, thanks, I'm excited. Yeah, let's. I there's so much to unpack here because you know many people are familiar with at this point UFO encounters, UFO abductions, but there hasn't really been much speak on the spiritual side of UFOs besides there are gods, uh, according to some belief systems. But we're going to go and dive deeper into these questions and kind of pick your brain from your research and from your thirty books that you have written so far and counting on this evolving topic that you know many people are really interested in so i grew up um going and attending many buddhist monasteries growing up at studying advanced metaphysic topics in sacred geometry about a merkaba and the art history is rich with images of high vibe enlightened humans who teleport into different dimensions, parallel realities, and different galaxies. And a lot of advanced Buddhism is very sci-fi and um, has a lot of reality shift um, imagery in it. So, um, you know, we'll see if there's, a, if there's some kind of connection because everything is connected and we'll find out where this connection is. So before we get into some of these questions to unpack this this topic, um, can you tell your story for how you got started in UFO research and where did this passion come from? Uh, yeah, I resisted the subject of UFOs. I was not attracted to it and was actually really skeptical. I didn't believe in UFOs for a second. <laughs> no, I didn't. And it was 1986, uh, mid-November. There was a report on the news about a sighting over Alaska. A pilot had reported this UFO tracking his plane. The co-pilot saw it. Uh, there were ground observers. Uh, it was a pretty good case. And the newscasters just kind of joked about it and moved on. And I thought, wow, you know, they showed a picture of the pilot. I thought this pilot is nuts. He's on drugs. He must be. This could not possibly be an extraterrestrial craft. These, because UFOs don't exist. But then I got a real shock. I made a mistake. I think, well, actually, I started asking people about this pilot. It was a topic of conversation. And people I loved and trusted started spilling the beans. My brother had chased a UFO, my sister in law saw a UFO. Two or three people at work had seen UFOs. Three good friends had seen UFOs. This Another, is all in Alaska? No, no, this is just people I knew. Oh, I, started okay. ask, I'm, I started asking them, like, have you ever seen anything? And they're like, yeah. And all, all of them had witnesses with them. My brother had chased a UFO down the road. He had two friends with him. My sister-in-law saw a UFO over Van Nuys Air Force Reserve Base. She had two friends with her. And uh, another person saw an egg-shaped object floating over their home. She had a witness. I started in- interviewing them all and the other witnesses. And I'm like, wow, you know, I think UFOs might be real. <laughs> I can't believe it. So it was a real shock. I did become obsessed. I'm not sure why. Uh, I don't have any childhood encounters that I can point to. 
but it's in my family. Some family members have actually seen ETs face to face, you know, humanoids. Explain what they, what your family members um, described. Yeah, sure. Um, one saw just kind of a blue glowing being uh, in his bedroom and wasn't able to get a real good look at it because it was kind of in a altered state of consciousness and was a little scared. But another was walking home to her house in Van Nuys, California, late one evening and saw two grays, two typical grays wearing olive green jumpsuits, large bald heads, big almond eyes, uh, and very close up. I mean, she was like 10 feet away from them. And where were they? Where were they? Like, yeah, it's so bizarre. They were standing in front of the Stag Street Elementary School. Um, which is the least likely place you'd expect. But that's where she saw them. Uh, what? Right in, and nobody else saw them or just her? Just her. This was late at night. It's a you know, late su- at night. Okay. suburb area. So, you know, late at night, there's, there are cars every now and then, but it's not like people are walking around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's just taking a late night walk. <laughs> wow. Um, that's amazing. And the picture that you, we, we have on your background, that is from your... Your sister-in-law, I think you said? Yep, um, who's worked with me uh, to draw UFO incidents as they occurred, or you know, showing how they, what they looked like. And this was a case from uh, near my home at the time in Topanga Canyon. <clears throat> oh. And uh, yeah, it involved four witnesses. They saw a bunch of UFOs and one was really big and shined a beam of light right in their house. And, and was what, like, what is the common theme that you hear in these UFO cases? Uh, well, there certainly are common themes. What I became very interested in is what, what happens when people are taken on board. Okay, yeah, what, is, what happens? What, yeah, because um, there are common themes. There is a very strong medical theme that runs through these accounts. People are physically examined, uh, often healed. I've got 300 documented cases of healings. Of mm. every, everything from colds to cancer. Uh, so there's a strong sort of genetic aspect. There's also a hybrid baby program, apparently. Explain um, the hybrid baby program. What's the intention of this quote, quote, baby hybrid program? Uh, this is something that I got reports from, from the very beginning. Happened to someone in my office. Oh, <laughs> really? Yes, I couldn't oh, believe it. Oh, my goodness. It. I'm like, I'm like, oh. You're like... You're like attracting them or something. Like, I mean, you must be sending out some kind of antenna. That's signal. what I thought. That's what I'm, I honestly, I'm like, what's going on? Uh, but yeah, she described this and I started getting other cases and you know, Bud Hopkins and other researchers started really you know, publicizing this at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And at the time it wasn't well known. So uh, it's pretty clear what what's happening. We now know I've gotten enough independent reports from multiple witnesses who don't know each other who have the same story. And that is the greys in particular have become sterile, to some extent are not able to reproduce. And why is that? Now, let me ask you this. Now, let's get into the greys because, um, you know, a lot of people will say there's the small grays and then there's a larger gray, like a taller gray. Is there a distinction in terms of species? Yeah, I think so. Colin and why, gray, what's the difference between the two different species? Um, it's hard to say. We don't really know. or I, I certainly don't know. Uh, there do appear to be different you know, phenotypes. I don't know if they're different species, so to speak. Because if you look at the variation among just humans Mm -hmm. here on earth you see very wide variations right right and we see very wide variations among the grays Mm -hmm. so they could be from different locations who adapted in ways very much like we did Mm -hmm. and are different groups so to speak but are essentially the same species Mm. Uh, i think that's what we're seeing in a lot of these cases with the grays that vary between four to six feet tall uh, but maybe the short ones, um, they could be perhaps androids. We have a n- number of reports that seem to point towards this. And that kind uh, of robotic um, labor. Yeah. Is, would that explain um, why in some of the, the reports of abductions, they would come back with different clothes on? Like, <laughs> like they're kind of um, not so bright and they didn't 
match the proper clothes that they abducted the person on? It, would that explain that? Or yeah, that's those... that's one main theory. There is another theory, though. What's the other theory? <laughs> the other theory is that they're doing it on purpose, and as as a calling card, as a little hint to give you something to latch on to so you know that this actually happened. That's a good point. That's a good point. Because if, if you were in the same clothes that you got abducted in, then it, you, you can wipe it off as a lot of different things. But if you were in completely different clothes, then that's a wake up call. Yeah. There's different reasons. I mean, one guy got pulled back in the nighty. I think that was almost a joke. I'm really wondering if they had sense of humor. You know, you know, <laughs> yeah. turn him into, and others are like, return to the wrong bed. I can see them doing that accidentally. Um, really? I find it really hard to believe that they would like intentionally put them in the wrong bed because they're so, quote, quote, so advanced of all these advanced technology, you would think they would get the basics <laughs> down. It's almost like a serial killer going on. I can't remember where I <laughs> put yeah. my truck, you know. People's clothes have been put on backwards. I've had a couple of cases where people woke up and their blanket was tucked, rolled up into a Tootsie Roll and tucked around the edges around their necks so they couldn't get up. That oh, was, that's weird. That's <laughs> weird. And why would that? Why would that? What's the purpose of that? That has got to be, I think, a calling card. That's got to be like, you know, something that they do to make the witness think. Uh, Wake them up. I don't think they're trying to scare people, mm -hmm. you know, because when someone's taken on board, we're talking about themes. Mm -hmm. there, there's three main things that, you know, people have beyond the physical examination. And that is being given warnings of some what kind. What are the warnings? What kind of warnings? They're very consistent, depend, no matter what type of ET. Uh, Gray's human looking, the contact era of the 50s, you know, praying mantis are all saying that giving warnings about environmental destruction, mm -hmm. that we have real problems with pollution, that we have real problems with nuclear proliferation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of shifts into sort of violence and wars as well. Right, a lot, right, a a fighting of, over resources, right. A lot of warnings about that. Um, so all kinds of natural disasters upcoming. They said, you're destroying your environment and you're, you're in for some really hard times. It's been mm -hmm. a consistent message from the day one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very positive thing. And I'm like, hey, these ETs you know, aren't evil. Um, mm -hmm. They're not trying to hurt people. They have an important message. Uh, you know, some are unemotional, but some are very caring. So you get kind of a whole mix, uh, bell curve of cases. Right. What and, are some of the other common themes that they? Yeah, there's another, which is uh, being taken to the engine room and they're told how the craft works. This happens fairly regularly. It's really cool. And how does the craft and, work? Uh, some form of electromagnetics is how it's usually described. Uh, okay. So, um, and usually it goes over the witness's head in a lot of these cases, but it's always some variation of a theme on that and mm. a sort of a lecture on like there are alternate energy sources. You know, there's free energy. Here's how we do it. You don't need fossil fuels. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the third and most prominent theme that I see pretty much I don't want to say all the time, but most of the time when, with someone who has contact is they come away spiritually transformed. Mm. They are given information about spirituality or given a spiritual boost. Mm -hmm. And what, is, what kind of information on the spirit side did they get? Uh, one guy, he came, well, this ha happens to a number of people. They come back with the ability to channel. Um, other arts are able to give psychic readings. There's many of them who become obsessed with healing, Reiki, hands-on healing, or even traditional healing. Uh, so that's a very strong spiritual shift. Uh, some start having out-of-body experiences. That's fairly common. And most common, and I'm going to say pretty much always, is people start having psychic uh, premonitions of, uh, I mean, like uh, precognition. Of, of whatever's going on in their life. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is a very, very strong theme. And, and the ETs themselves, when they talk about it, say, yeah, we're trying to wake you up to your own natural human talents.
they are trying to wake us up. That's what their main, one of their main agenda is, is. Right, right. So they're trying to incite a, or kind of poke at an awakening, a spiritual awakening on the person. Yes. 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 Awaken so, us to our own heritage, who we really are. Who we really are. So now we, now we get, we kind of jump leaps and bounds ahead uh, because a lot of these abduction stories seem to happen over a course of many generations. Is there like a theme for why, you know, it's a generational thing? Yeah, well, it certainly explains why people are still being contacted because it's, this has been going on for generations. We do see this. We've got cases stretching back four or five generations or mm. more. So we know this is a thing. And this is and why is that? What, what is the... Yeah. Uh, the outcome a, they're looking for? ETs seem, seem to have a very strong interest in genetics. Um, genetics is a really big attraction to them. Getting genetic material is like the number one thing that people have when they have an onboard UFO experience. So they're tracking families. And I think what they're doing is basically intervening with our genetic evolution uh, and upgrading us, upgrading our health, our, our longevity. And I know that's a bold statement, but I can back it up with specific cases. I really can, and yeah. evidence. Tell us some of the um, specific cases that um, support this. Yeah, over and over again, I hear contactees telling me, I've, I've written about these cases in some of my books, uh, that they feel that their health has been upgraded by the ETs and they go for physical examination and doctors tell them, well, you have a heart of a 18 year old. A specific case occurred in Florida to a guy by the name of Jim and he was being regularly visited by Grays and had gotten over the fear and would talk to them. He's like, he asked, if you're gonna take me, could you please heal my hernia? This is how I heard about this case. I was researching UFO healings. And the, the grace said, oh, yeah, we know of this problem and we will repair it. And they did. So this was cool. This was a nice positive experience so far. And he asked, well, why are you taking me? You know, why are you so interested in me? And they said, we are very interested in your genetic propensity to live a long time. Uh, which Jim thought was very interesting because his grandfather was 106 and still kicking. Uh, and this is interesting to me because what we've seen with the, you know, if you look back at the traditional human history, there are missing links. There appears to be all kinds of indication of us mating with the gods and other genetic manipulation. And uh, we've also had a doubling of lifespan in the last you know, hundred or two years. Uh, so it looks like we're moving in the right direction. And yeah, we see all kinds of variation in human origins. And it appears that ETs have been actively intervening for you know, thousands of years, perhaps. Perhaps. But there's also a lot of um, people who don't have alien abduction stories in their, fam in their family history who live a long life as well because of a variety of different things, good um, diet, good, good diet, good activity, a lot of, you know, better health type of things that they do. Could that be the contributing factor to a longer lifespan overall? Oh, yeah. I'm sure there are many, many different factors. Uh, but I wonder how pervasive or saturated the ET contact experience is. Because hmm. I've talked to some people. I mean, there's a guy in England. He's, he says, you know, probably not going to believe me, but I'm pretty sure every person on our planet is being taken. And, oh, really? And why, why is that? Um, yeah, that's kind of what I asked him. He's like, well, he's seen... That's large... kind of big, <laughs> big project. <laughs> he says most people don't remember, which is true. I think that that's true. I've had many cases where people had no memory at all or any reason to think that they were having contact. Mm. Not a sighting, nothing. Uh, yeah. But, and later found out that there was a history and they suddenly remembered. It was hidden in amnesia. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's seen large groups of people and there are many, many cases in the literature where people have seen large groups of people on board UFOs, uh, hundreds of people. So it's a possibility. And you know, UFO abductions were thought to be rare, but 
J. Allen Hynek said, no, it's about one in 40 people have been on board a UFO. One in 40? That's a pretty high number. That's one what I thought. I read that in the beginning of my research. I'm like, one in 40? No way. That's a lot. That, that means I know someone who's been on board a UFO. And that's what started me asking people. And mm. I, so I found, yeah, it was perhaps more than one in 40, unless everyone around me is being, a, not everyone, but so I surveyed the literature and I wrote an article about this called One in 40. And it was a year later that the Roper organization did a survey. They're a survey mm -hmm. organization about UFOs and abductions. And they snuck in all these secret questions that would let researchers know if they were being, if a person was being abducted by ETs, mm -hmm. such as missing time, a close-up UFO sighting, weird scars, balls of light in your house, and other th red flags that we look for. I, they, now, they called one in 50. Is one in 50. One in yeah. 50. Now, some of these things like weird scars or time slips or other things, are they really attributed to UFO or is that basically, um, you, you know, like you said earlier, your own abilities that you have yet to fully activate, your own six senses? Are that just people's six senses? Like when they come across them, somehow they... Um, help elevate their six senses because uh, you can activate your six senses through your spiritual work without ever being abducted or or con being connected to aliens in any yeah. shape yeah and i think what we see sometimes is people who have done that who have you know are psychic in simple terms uh but but are in the process of ascension perhaps <laughs> you know and uh et seem to be very drawn towards that Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure which comes first, the horse or the cart in some of these cases <laughs> where you know, people are reporting all these psychic events because the ETs are definitely drawn towards people who have a high psychic awareness. Yeah, yeah. Let me, so like I am a hypnosis practitioner and I use the, there's, um, there's a couple of different modalities for hypnosis. I use the Dolores Cannon method of quantum healing hypnosis technique. And I get plenty of starseed clients who under hypnosis seem to have a common theme of being a quote, quote, alien soul that incarnated at this time in mass to help build the fifth dimension on earth. However, um, like others, they also must get beyond their human dramas that kind of lower their frequency and keep them at the low density and they have to get over the, the same things that everybody else does because they're playing the same quote quote game and i've even had some encounters with strange beings like in the room or whatever um to for whatever reason right before i'm supposed to see some of these starseed clients and my work is all Buddhism and spirituality and metaphysics. I'm very open to different modalities because there's a lot of different ways to manifest and a lot of different tools that you can have in the, the tool belt and use what you need. So I'm very open to, you know, engaging with any of these. But this seems to be kind of permeating in my work, which is why I was like, okay, there's a spiritual connection to this. And for some reason, when I, when I do these hypnosis sessions, um, when I talk to the higher self in the starseed clients, it is brought forth that um, they need to get over the human dramas, they need to get over the 3D suffering, they need to raise their energy, they need to awaken spiritually, um, they need to work on leveling up their energy field and ascension process so that they can get to the fifth dimension where they was the purpose of them incarnating here is to help build the foundations of the fifth dimension because those foundationals settings that they help put in place in society and all over the world will be the building blocks that take us to an interstellar humanity which is falls right in line with a lot of the ancient buddhism that i've been studying and the sci-fi stuff i've been studying and so i wonder you know for somebody like you in this work have you done reincarnation or hypnosis to see um if your if your cases the abductees and the people who are seeing these if they're um if they have had previous incarnations like why did they 
incarnate at this time? I mean, what reality did they come from? What, what past life did they come from? Have you done any of that just to kind of uncover what's below their consciousness prior to this lifetime? Uh, I haven't actively personally used hypnosis. Um, what I do is, you know, questioning and interviewing. And a number of these witnesses do report this and they'd have past life memories of being ETs uh, for sure. For one sure. Guy, okay. Oh yeah. One guy, Joe, he has a very distinct memory of being an ET and, and he was in the craft and they were looking down on earth, looking for a volunteer to go incarnate. And oh, the person whose job it was to do it didn't want to do it. And he says, I will do it. I agree to go. And uh, he got a lot of praise for that from his group that he was in. <laughs> Doesn't really remember what the, you know, looked like so much, but, uh -huh. uh, but has this weird memory that's always persisted from a very young age and ended up having an enormous number of UFO encounters with uh, a, you know, human looking ETs and uh -huh. gray, gray ETs and uh, all kinds of paranormal stuff. All kinds of stuff. So, so a lot of these cases that you research in your 30 books on UFO research, um, they have vivid recall of past lives as yeah. these different aliens. So, so it kind of goes into my next question. So some people have difficulty with like diversity and multiculturalism in their country and within the world um, as we become more integrated. And, um, you know, in my hypnosis, the prime directive, it is a real thing <laughs> in consciousness. So it's, 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 you know, we're going to kind of start tracking and stuff, but it's like in hypnosis, when you talk to the higher self or the over soul, that's just, it's the same consciousness in everybody. We're all connected. So every black man, every woman, every man, every child, every single white man, it, you know, Native American man, whatever, whatever your sim is, the same consciousness flows through everybody. And that higher self, when I speak to it in hypnosis, it says that the prime directive is a real thing. It is not going to let anyone interfere with someone's creation process for their own evolution because they work they understand they're working out their story they're working out their thing so um so aliens can't just come in and just take over and be like you're gonna do xyz to make everything better so what they have to do and this is in dolores cannon's work and i've seen this with my clients as well with my starseed clients is what they have to do is in order to change the game, they must play the game from within the game as a player. Right. Well, applying the same rules of amnesia and the same issues of that humanity's um, most people in humanity struggle to overcome like the 3d suffering issues and so forth. So, um, and so when I, when I get these clients, they're like, I don't know why I got sent to you, my computer crashed, your thing came up, whatever. And then they come forth and that's exactly what it is. <laughs> getting them to their spiritual awakening, getting them to ascension, getting them into the fifth dimensional work that they are, came here to do. And some of them have had encounters um, with quote, quote, UFO that they believe they had in their dream state or at night or whatever, or they have memory of this. So um, what is your thought on, on the concept of the prime directive with, when it comes to these cases that you work on? Yeah, we see it. Yeah, it's really interesting because you, you talk about Star Trek and I have to laugh because much of what we saw in Star Trek, we do see in UFO encounters, whether it's you know handheld healing devices, or teleporters and uh, the prime directive. Yeah, it turns up. It's very interesting. The Galactic Federation type thing. These sort of things definitely turn up. It appears that the, well, in one case I researched uh, a man and a woman were driving through Sedona when they had this UFO following their car and then suddenly it jumped ahead of them on the road and it kind of forced them to follow it. <laughs> and it sort of, sort of, just hung around them for a while and suddenly landed in the field and disappeared, or so they thought. Later under hypnosis, they recalled that this thing landed in the field and they were, a door opened and they were invited on board. They went on board voluntarily. It was very nice. They saw what they would describe as hybrid ETs, I guess. They looked very much human, but had pale skin, dark eyes, 
no hair, uh, but could have passed for human with a hat and sunglasses, they said. And she asked them, where are you from? And they said, well, you know, it's not really important. And they, said, they said, why are you here? And they said, well, we're here to help people, but we can only help so much. You know, you guys have to work out your own problems. Exactly. And, and there's many cases that speak to this. One lady, she was in a car accident and the ETs took her and started healing her. They said, you actually died in this accident. You weren't supposed to die. So we're going to re repair your brain stem here, which was severed. Mm. And they repaired a bunch of stuff, and then she was returned to the scene of the accident, severely injured and uh, with broken ribs. And, and the ETs told her, we are not able to heal everything due to karmic reasons. Explain that, because, because see, even, see, you know, you can watch certain um, movies and shows that kind of um, put aliens on a pedestal like there are gods and we should worship them. But I have never heard a case where they actually say that. Yeah, I've got a couple like that. Yeah, and I've I never heard a case of a UFO abduction where they say there are gods, now you need to worship me. If anything, they're like, oh, we're here to assist right, you. Right, 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 exactly. So can you clarify that? Because they're following karmic um, yeah, yeah, laws there are, as well. There are laws they have to buy. The Kanchos land, another guy in Japan is told the same thing. It's hmm. that we're, we're not allowed to just show ourselves and announce our presence yet. We're not going to do that. There's definitely a law of non-interference, pretty much exactly like Star Trek. Yeah. And people do have a tendency to sort of, you know, deify or even demonify these beings. Uh, when in fact, they're very much like us. There right. are fewer, there are more similarities than differences. Right, right. I find that very interesting also because even in your work, you're finding that they have a, they're, they, they're subject to the prime directive, they're subject to karmic, um, you know, karmic laws. Like, like, you know, like if somebody is supposed to have some event like the client that had, they couldn't heal all her bones and all her issues from the car wreck or the accident, but they healed what they could up to a certain point. Um, so she is still destined to have the experience that she's supposed to have from that car accident. Yeah, because of course we learn through our trials and tribulations and every dark event has a silver lining. We have to learn to see the positive side of events. And we have to, you know, that's why we're here on Earth. I think this is something the ETs seem to echo is to uh, experience things you can't experience elsewhere. Right, right. It's part of your life lesson, right? In um, in Buddhism, all of our silver linings, all of our lessons, all of our struggles, also factor into our triumphs and our achievements. And learning from all of these different things help you become a better manifester of reality. Yeah, it's very interesting because there is one message that e people do get, which is that uh, there is an ascension process going on. Tell us about that. Uh, and I find this fascinating because it's often put into different words. Some people will say flat out, oh, we're moving up into the fifth dimension. Flat out. That's the message they're getting. And it's not articulated in detail. Uh, but some will say, oh, the universe will fundamentally change at some point. It's going to be a very different world. And not just different as in things change, but in the laws of the universe in some way. Uh, another way people often put it is being going up a vibration or um, some will say there's going to be a new wave of galactic energy sweeping through and it changes the sort of, you know, there's lots of esoteric terms used to describe what appears to be the same thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is, which is a kind of earth shaking event in which we do move up a level to the point where we experience telepathy and clairvoyance and precognition and can see ghosts and have contact with the ETs and have a, a completely different sort of experience of life on earth compared to now. Right, right. And so let me explain this also with the, um, what does your, your cases tell you about um, the fifth dimension or about going to a higher frequency of earth? I mean, all that, that whole process. Do you have any further details of what they, what they say? Uh, no, not really, uh, but it's something that's fairly consistent. And what we do see is people are having this experience. 
are seeing ghosts and they are having all these kind of fifth dimensional experiences. And it seems like there's a grassroots sort of movement to sort of spark this, these abilities in certain people and it will sort of uh, resonate with others. Right. So kind of they actually function, they could function like a tuning fork. Yeah. So, so there's a very strong movement to not only for pe people to be convinced of the ET reality, because I think we're moving towards open official contact. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly do. Yeah. Uh, so the question with the open offic official contact, <laughs> <laughs> open contact. Okay. That's great in your backyard, but open official um, it's a good one. So open official contact. Explain, because I can explain this from the Buddhism perspective of frequencies and um, the esoteric perspective of raising your vibration by working on your dense issues and working on your life lessons, look, working on how to manifest a better reality. And by doing so, you get into higher and higher realities. And it's like, we don't go anywhere. It's almost like it sounds like we shift into a reality, like going from third shift to five, you know, to a higher shift in your car. We just shift into a higher reality. And then all of a sudden, like a tuning fork, we change the, um, the frequency. And then we're in a higher dimension where we can finally coexist in the same reality that these um, higher energy, quote, unquote, aliens exists in is that kind of like the the concept that you're getting from these cases is it something like that yeah i'm not sure if it's going to be a snap process no it's not or, process, or, or, but yeah or if it's going to sort of evolve and i think that there are probably places on earth that are a little bit more interdimensional than others uh, because uh, we have, you know what i mean we have like hot ufo hot spots yes, yes. Uh, and in in these hot spots it's not just ufos there are a lot of cryptozoological creatures. There are a lot of psychic stuff, you know, religious apparitions, mm -hmm. weird stuff. Um, and it's like certain areas and, and temples and have a higher vibration. Right, right. Now, let you me have, ask. Yeah, you have people walking around with a high vibration. You have areas with a higher vibration. And it sort of starts to go. Zzzz, and, exactly. I want to go um, get to my next <laughs> question because you're getting into like you're getting into my favorite stuff. Um, so um, I wrote a book on Buddhist mandalas and people like everybody's energy, the scientific evidence that everybody has an energy field, your Merkaba, your mandala, whatever you want to call it. And that energy field can go up in frequency depending on, you know, you learning how to manifest um, a little bit clearer. So anyways, the, I wrote a chapter on the earth. The earth also has chakra points that happen to where to be where there are high magnetics. And a lot of pyra pyramids and megaliths reside on these earth grid points. So my question to you is, are the starships or spaceships, if you wanna call it, um, are they gliding along the earth grids? You know, cause it seems like a lot of these UFO sightings, um, they come in cycles, so. Yeah, that's certainly one of the theories. Um, and they kind of tried to explain that in terms of, you know, magnetics and they're using the whole, th you know, field of the planet Earth. And we do see clusters of sightings around certain areas that you would consider sacred or, you know, the ley lines or mm -hmm. the, where the, all the crop circles are appearing. Yeah. And Sedona. Um, yeah. Areas, areas like have magnetic vortexes, perhaps. So this might make them more visible in a way. Uh, so we see them in a way that more easily perhaps, or they use it to come in and out, uh, you know, come down. Right, travel. right. You know, I have another question because you just mentioned something about Vortex. It, um, it's along this line. And this is so funny how there's a lot of um, connection points between your UFO research and my metaphysic spiritual research in, um, the ascension of earth in further further into five five d um many of my clients are farmers <laughs> so, or they want to be farmers of some sort whether it's cannabis or hemp or vertical farming or whatever like 
space age farming. So many of them are, are attracted to farming. And one of the, uh, the future parallel realities that I have seen in my own hypnosis session is that I am a space farmer in, <laughs> in a future earth reality. I my hover over space actually Boeing ends up being a spaceship manufacturer <laughs> amongst many. Um, but anyway, it's a very, it's a very funny, um, hypnosis session, but a lot of my clients happen to be star seeds and they happen to be gearing towards farming and kind of green technology, um, kind of portals, all that kind of stuff. And oftentimes when I talk to the higher self in them, they're giving them a fifth dimensional blueprint for how to run the business with the resources around right now. And they're giving them guidance to look for, um, earth or land that has portals in it or maybe like the trees kind of like you know go in a circle the branches kind of grow in a circle or there's maybe like circle fairy rings and you know this kind of those kind of things and so um oftentimes they're basically trying to be good stewards and caretakers of the earth and they're attracted to these um places where they want to start their farm or their business, the earth business, that have these high magnetics, that have these unusual portal type of characteristics. Almost like, it's almost like they came here to one, have their spiritual awakening, two, have their ascension to get to the fifth dimension, and then three, take care of these sacred spots on earth by making sure that it doesn't get um, destroyed through commercialization, um, you know, of some form. Uh, do you get any of that in your work where like the type of jobs that they are is very green, very caretaker, like ter yeah, caretakers of the garden yeah. kind of stuff? I'm so glad you asked this question. Okay, good, yeah, yay. Oh, well, I, I really am, because uh, I looked hard, I'm like, wow, who's having contact? You know, who's having contact and why? I started analyzing my cases very scientifically, like, okay, it's evenly divided between men and women. Interesting. Um, and I was looking at all the healing cases because I had 300 accounts. I'm like, evenly divided between men and women, young and old, all different races all over the world, stretching back 100 years. Where's the pattern here? Education? No. Religion? Blood type? What I found was, in fact, profession, your job. Uh, wasn't was a pattern. The main pattern was, you know, which we talked about, genetics and following family lines. There seemed to be a lot of people having contact who have a history of it in their family. But another was the job, <laughs> and this was so surprising. The that is so weird. What is it about the job? Their job. The the kind of people who have contact are people who are doing good work for humanity in some capacity. Right, right. These are doctors, teachers, artists, musicians. Oh my God, there's so many musicians. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you can raise your frequency through music. You can raise and heal through music. Yeah, inventors, uh, environmentalists, human rights activists. I have yet to meet someone who's having contact who does not go love animals more than people. <laughs> I mean, they are ready to save the animals. They will do anything. Yeah. They all have multiple pets. It's amazing. They all have very unusual animal stories. It's almost across the board. Right, right. So there is, def and yeah, farmers. People are like, after my experience, you know, I'm, I'm going to become a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> lots of farmers, lots of farmers. I'm going to create a yoga a meditation retreat on my farm and I'm going to be a farmer. I'm going to have a, you know, exactly. a sanctuary for animals on my farm and everything's all about the farm and all about uh, the land. It's all about being. Yeah, that's what um, I want to do. Honestly. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> that's so funny. It's like your care. It's like in, in essence, I'm going to use a Dolores Cannon word. It's like they are caretakers of the garden. Yes, yes. There's a reason why that book remains on the bestseller list. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Because her stuff, yeah, is um, bringing out these truths. Is, your work is so amazing. It sounds like that's the, you're confirming her stuff. And, I, I really you know, blazing, am. Blazing it forward even to... 
Possibly. So. I don't, I, like I said, I don't advertise, but their, their higher selves, their spirit guides, their angels, you know, whatever. Um, three, 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 somebody calls, bing, I need a hypnosis session. <laughs> five, <laughs> five, five, bing, <laughs> you know, whatever. I, I so, hear that. I hear that from other experiencers, the repeating numbers. The repeating numbers, repeating numbers. Um, and just a lot of, I, I've had many interviews about the ironic synchronicities between how my clients find me. And then every single time they're either a toku or a, this is their first lifetime. They're coming straight from source. So they have no reference point for other lifetimes so oh, wow. they're kind of like wish yeah they kind of went from um like zero to phd so they're kinda, they, they don't have a lot of like suffering or things to um reference in other lifetimes or or they're star seeds you know they've had a couple lifetimes here on earth just to get a just to get some basis on how to adjust but for the most part they had existed in other lifetimes in other um, dimensions in other realities in other planets and solar systems i mean i mean i I've, I've gotten quite a bit of um clients who will explain full civilizations that they don't know of and then they research and they come back and like oh my god i didn't know that we just discovered that star last month or whatever so um i don't really get into that part of it because i just ask the questions about um their 3d issues that are lowering their, that that's lowered their frequency help and try to help them get to their um, to raise their energy so they can get to their awakening, spiritual awakening, and ascension process. Because it's a process. You, you know, you're not going to go to zero to 180 immediately. You might blow your fuse. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a process. It's a gradual process. You're going to you know, level up as you go. Um, and they often give them, like I said, a fifth dimensional business plan. It's always caretakers, caretakers, caretakers. I'm like, what is it about farming and these special magnetic points on the earth? And I'm like... Duh, I wrote a book on magnetic points on the earth. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, their higher self would send them to something like that. But um, the other thing in this line is, you know, the technology in the cases that you've researched, because you said one of the themes is technology and how does the spaceships work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the technology that these quote unquote aliens um, use, does it have? anything to do with matching up with their harmonics of the Schumann residents of earth because the Schumann resident will go up and down so do they also adjust to the energies of earth i think so they don't specifically you know mention Schumann and residents and those sort of things but what we see is people are taken in a variety of ways I and mean, we sometimes et's just uh, appear in your house and they'll you know, kind of physically levitate you through the wall and up into a craft. Other people are struck by a beam of light or in some cases se seem to be teleported in some fashion. Uh, so it is very Star Trek. And uh, they can find a person anywhere. And it's not apparently through the use of implants uh, in the cases that where people have gotten information. They're like, oh, no, it's your vibration. We can tell because each person gives off a certain signature. Uh, yeah, but, that's what they have in Buddhism. Everybody has a specific energy signature, and you can you can actually see what your Merkaba or Mandala looks like. Yeah, which makes sense. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, now gets into um, my next question. <laughs> okay, so now okay, we're going to get space age. I'm going to go space age with you. Um, because some people that I interview, I can only poke and pry a little too, like gauge, you know, gauge. <laughs> <laughs> but you ain't gonna gauge. Um, um, I don't want to blow the fuse on the interview. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, the, now from eyewitness reports, it seems like these starships teleport. So you never really see them like travel from point A to B like you see planes. It just seems like whoop and then whoop. <laughs> exactly. So, um, do they do they submit to the concept of longitude, latitude, and vibration of frequency of the destination in their teleportation equ equations? Have you ever heard about that? Kind of like let me give you an idea, like yeah, Scotty, I like Scotty from Star Trek, who's always complaining. You know how hard it is to factor out the frequency of this location, that location, and this density, and that density, whatever. Do they do something like that? 
yeah, I think it's very close. Here's a case which speaks directly towards this, actually. Okay, tell me, it's yeah. A great case. The case, lady I interviewed by the name of Pat has had experiences her whole life, and one time she was taken on board, uh, one of many times, and the ETs wanted to do a demonstration for her to show how they travel. And they brought her over New York, and then they flew instantly to LA, and then back to New York. And they turned to her and they said, do you understand? And she said, I think so. This is like Star Trek. Is what she said. It's, just, you're, it's like the transporter beam. And they said, no, no, you don't understand. And they did it again and brought her back. And they said, now do you understand? And she said, no, <laughs> I don't understand. And they said, well, we're not actually moving. Um, we're moving the space around us. If you know the sort of, like you said, the vibration, I, don't, I forget what words they used, the coordinates, uh, you can tune into it and kind of not move in the way we think of it. They're not flying. They are slipping. It's, it's, they're moving space. Let me give you some words. Let me give you some words. <laughs> this is from my spirituality research, okay? I'm going to give you some two sources that may, may have some correlation. The, force, the first source is in Buddhism. It's all about tuning forks and frequencies, sound vibration. And if you want to levitate something, you have to get to a certain frequency in the vibration, and that will change the matter of space. So, you know, it's just about frequency. Um, and they know that when they um, calibrate or, or, or get the energy field to make sure that the person that they are appointing into certain positions within the monasteries have to be the, um, at a high frequency, maybe like uh, have, they have to have a mandala or a merkaba, like a teacher. And so they will do meditation and just try to, make sure that they calibrate correctly. So everybody has a frequency that's unique to them. Um, it's your energy signature that you take with you lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, and no matter what your physical persona and storyline changes, it's the same energy field, it's the same soul. And so there's, there's so, and they, they have found, you can translate that into physical location. So if, if you study the Dr. David R. Hawkins, and he was a mental health doctor for over 40, 50 years in his lifetime, he came across when he got, he got bored of calibrating people, he started calibrating locations. And he found that different locations have different frequencies. So a, a a location in New York City will have a different calibration and frequency than the energy signature of like say Seattle or say the Bahamas or whatever. Every location has its own, kind of like they have its own wow. longitude and latitude. They also have their own energy signature. Yeah. And so is that kind of how in this case with your client is that kind of how their, their their ships travel is it just change the density yeah i think so because i mean we're looking at something that's clearly interdimensional these craft change in size they said that they have the ability to do that that witnesses would ask how do you do that <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, so they have the ability to turn invisible turn at right angles and all these things because they're not using fossil fuels this is a more of a these ships are flown mentally, you know, there's through a engaging with the consciousness of the person. So the ships, it. the ships are almost like they're organic. Yeah, I think, well, some or the of ships them, have consciousness. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think, I think that that's probably true. Uh, but I do think that these are metallic ships, you know, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. These are mm -hmm. real craft as we would think of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and a, at least a lot of cases. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, um, Preston, there is some consciousness research being done at different universities right now, and they're in the early stages, but they'll come to find out what uh, many um, Buddhist um, schools of thought have found out is that technology um, can, that everything is conscious. Everything, all the trees, all the rocks, all the space between is conscious, and all our technology is conscious as well. It's not AI on its own, but you can, you can through your consciousness, affect it. So they've done research where they have people focusing on a, on a broken object, 
the technology is broken and then all of a sudden it will start working again because they have infused um, through meditation that they see the object working. So they have changed it almost like they've, they changed their frequency to a reality where it's working now. So I don't know quite sure how the, the, the process or semantics work, but it has to do something with consciousness. And that's maybe that's why um, in many of your cases, they keep on going back to your spiritual awakening, <laughs> level up your frequency. Everything's about frequency and harmonics, all about consciousness. So, I mean, what else can, do you have to, to say about, um, about the, their technology? Yeah, I think, well, we're looking at some, uh, you know, these UFOs do clearly have an advanced technology. Um, I think we know that and that some of our own technology has been sort of reverse engineered from it. So there is a very physical aspect to all of this. Uh, right, at the right. same time, I, I love this whole spiritual aspect. There's a lot of researchers who are just not in, they're, they're in the nuts and bolts of all of this. That's the low level stuff. And, and I'm not interested, because we, they say we can travel to other planets, even without spacecraft. This is what right. the ETs are trying to t tell us about out of body travel and uh, past lives. And there's a very, very strong spiritual aspect to all of this. Right, right. Um, Right. And that's one thing I liked about your research is a lot of UFO researchers will kind of go into like the, the simplistic stuff, like uh, all, it's all about the technology and all about the physical stuff and everything else. And when you get into consciousness research, the physical stuff is malleable. Reality is fluid. It is all about consciousness and um, the, the, the spiritual nature of reality that you experience and that's what i like about like a lot of the cases that you go into they kind of start touching and teasing on that a little bit more and so it's kind of like feuding fusing ufos and spirituality together because they, they they are the same they're the they, same thing yeah they, they come they meet at the end sort of they meet at the end they, they meet at the end they converge it's an interweaving interweaving the whole way yeah. through yeah, uh, your, your tinfoil hat events eventually becomes your Merkava. <laughs> <laughs> your tinfoil hat becomes your, um, your mandala <laughs> eventually. But th that goes into my next question. Now, are you, you're familiar with the work of Daryl Anka, who channels the alien entity Bashar, right? I am. Okay. And so just for people who are not familiar with who Bashar is, um, he has, for over 30 years now, um, he channels his future self, where he is a starship captain on a mission. This is literally what he says. And I've seen every single interview I can get my hands on because I, like I said, just like you, I research everything. <laughs> I research everything with no opinion. <laughs> um, it's the Buddhist way. <laughs> Keep an open mind. You might find some nuggets of gold somewhere that you never exactly, thought. Exactly. Yeah. And then put it together. <laughs> put it yes. together. And that's how I was able to put my book Buddhist Mandalas together, that we are all Merkabas. But anyways, so he channels his future self. He's a starship captain on a mission to help humanity raise their consciousness so that they can make a smooth transition into a higher parallel reality where interstellar humanity happens now that's that's his backstory he said it many many times in in different interviews and he explains in his 30 years or so of research that his race of aliens are a creation by a future enlightened human civilization Ooh, yeah. and that's that's what he says that's literally what he says when he's channeled and yeah. that bestows this enlightened human civilization in this higher dimension bestowed their metaphysic wisdom onto them. And they are just paying it back by coming back to the time where it all began to help us get a smoother transition and get to that higher dimension. So what are your thoughts on the concept of Bashar? Because it's kind of falling right into, <laughs> right into place with all this. No, I'm actually really really surprised to get this question because i have a personal connection oh um, tell us yeah you know i started researching in 86 and i researched for 10 years before I, I saw i was writing articles but before i wrote my first book uh so i was in this field pretty much under the radar 
for a good 10 years. And it was during that time I had the opportunity to meet uh, Daryl Anka. Is that his name? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and uh, he was channeling Bashar. And I'm like, this sounds interesting. Let's investigate channeling. Because I've got some books on channeling. I had to look into it because it was part of UFO research. And I loved the books. I thought they were very positive and had some really amazing messages. And uh, I found them very compelling and convincing. And started looking into the whole phenomenon of channeling. And I'm like, wow, he, this guy's one of the big shots in the field. I can't wait. Um, and went to see him. It was a small group. And got a chance. You know, we all raised our hand, hoping for a reading. And he picked me. So I'm super jazzed. And, and he just looked at me. I, I, we weren't asking any questions. He would just give you a reading. And he looks at me and he says, well, <laughs> UFOs. And I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> I'm not well known. You know, I guess that was my point in the beginning. Um, he could not possibly know me. Uh, and uh, he says, well, you know, I see that you are actually um, had a recent past life as an extraterrestrial. I'm like, oh, you know, because this kind of fits in to why I'm so obsessed with all this. And uh, he, says, he says, and there's a reason for it. And the reason you're, you incarnated in this lifetime is to help anchor the ET energy on Earth. And that was pretty much the gist of it. He may have said a few other things, but that's what kind of bowled me over. <laughs> and it was funny because I had the opportunity to see two other channel, channelers immediately afterwards. And darn if they didn't both say the same thing. You were an ET in a past life. I'm like, whoa. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You and you didn't even have to get a hypnosis session from Von Galt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but I want fine. one now. <laughs> do fine. Uh, oh, man. Uh, if you come into Seattle and get a hypnosis session, I would be happy to facilitate your session. However, whatever race you're from, can they not visit me beforehand? Because I do love my beauty sleep. <laughs> okay, I love my beauty sleep. No guarantees, but I'll, now, I'll ask. <laughs> yeah, now, um, the, the funny, you know, it, f for me, the funny, the funny thing about, you know, before I got into this work, because I was just basically um, doing research into the ancient event studies of Buddhism, and, um, you know, esoteric traditions. And um, I got thrown into the hypnosis because it was part of the research for the book. It was a little aspect of the research for the book, but I kept it because I really liked talking to the higher self. It was like a cheat code for me. So I'm like, yeah, all right. I will not do the Rike and the Kung Fu, but I'll do this. Um, the other stuff is good too. And there's a lot of really good <laughs> energy healing modalities, but I like the one that lets me have the direct um, conversation because I will totally ask questions all the way up to to the energy and the atomic level and um, you know it's always it always is the same thing to me it said Vaughn you 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 and this this falls in line with a lot of the Buddhist monks that I grew up with who said you're a life planner I'm like, what's a life planner? And I actually had this in my hypnosis session and also the higher self say this as well through my clients. So it's kind of like, I don't ask anymore because I'm kind of like, okay, fine, whatever. But they're like, you're a life planner. And a life planner is someone in the spirit world who helps souls plan their lives, certain aspects of the lives. So kind of like if you're going to go to a vacation, you go to a travel agent, who will give you some options for excursions and how you can get there, et cetera. And then you pick from there. Um, but you're a life planner. And um, I was like, okay, no problem. And um, so it's funny because basically they're sending my clients that I help plan their lives <laughs> <laughs> to me. <laughs> and I've had clients, wow. who just, I open the door and like, oh my God. I'm like, what? And they're like, I know you. I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> and they're like, I had this exact 
exact vision right here just at this moment deja vu at this exact moment this is the first time i've ever come to your house i flew from another state to come here the first time i came to your house and i just had a deja vu moment like i've done this before i was like well i guess i helped you plan your life let's see where you got <laughs> bottled let's see where you got bottlenecked and where you got you know hung up on your 3d issues and see what's going on because you're back on track <laughs> so you're back on track so it's funny that you say that you find the same thing in your clients and it's all all coming around to everybody has to get their spiritual awakening work on their leveling up their energy field and this gets into another thing because you know in buddhism and in vedas and in indigenous cultures worldwide and i'm from the Hmong tribe of laos and we have our belief system about these folklores as well and um these quote quote aliens are just they're not our gods they're another expression of source okay so there's no one to pray to because you're an fractal expression of source so look at yourself in the mirror but mm -hmm. um now the earth it completed a twenty-five thousand year cycle around the galaxy at 2012 it's actually a real thing and in buddhism they 2012 is 2555 according to the buddhist era calendar which is a year of change over so um and the folklore and the belief that they have been waiting thousands of years to do is that people who tune into the higher energies or the higher dimensions of reality with earth as she leaps further into the fifth dimension um will you know we'll get to a reality that have higher beings such as aliens you know this is where like i said i keep on repeating this over and over again where we make the first contact because we can't make the first contact in that low energy state because they're so high energy and what i find interesting about your cases is that oftentimes they um they describe these beings as glowing as very high energy afterward they feel very light they feel very happy i mean it's all about energy and so they are re they are in a high energy frequency and we are so um so much lower so we're just trying to raise our personal what i call mandala to a higher energy field so that we can actually see each other what are your thoughts on that yeah I, I agree. I think I, there are cases that I have that speak directly towards that. One lady I interviewed, she had a long conversation with the gray ET telepathically. She's had face-to-face -face experiences, onboard experiences, but one day just hooked up one morning. <laughs> she reached out and hooked up. His, and the gray's name was Sen, and they were very strongly connected mm -hmm. to the point where she could look through his eyes. Oh, okay. And, and he, he could kind of look through hers, and she got the impression that yeah, it was very uncomfortable for him to contact humans because of our coarse, lower vibrations. See, it comes up over and over again. Yes, and this is one of the reasons why they're not landing, because it's very difficult for them to withstand our aura of aggression and violence and yeah. hatred and all the things we're working our way through. Yeah, these are low energy, oh. low vibe issues that, I mean, we think they're issues and we think, oh, our wars and our hatreds and our prejudices and all these different things that we struggle, that some people struggle to overcome, we think they're just issues and they should not really affect them. But these issues have, especially in Buddhism, these issues have energy attached to them. And that energy is part of your life and part of your being and so you are that energy and so um and so if they're a higher energy it's simple physics it really is yeah one lady she told me that she was taken on board a craft and the et showed her a band of blackness that's surrounding our planet and i said this is, these are all the evil thoughts you guys are having these are all the darkness these are your hatreds and your fears and your angers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, it's and it's clouding you up and you need to work on that to clear this out it's holding your progress right right that comes up over and over again in my hypnosis sessions um and in my work is the healing the energy healing is good that's going to energy heal all that kind of stuff 
but the true healing is is the disconnect to consciousness yes yeah. yeah we're disconnected from the consciousness of the higher self from within us and we can't recognize it in each other and it's that disconnection to consciousness and the not understanding the nature of reality and consciousness that um permeates in these low vibe um, thoughts and um, things that we do to each other and to the environment because we're not conscious and so it always comes back to consciousness heal the disconnect to consciousness always comes back and so oftentimes my work it's always coming back to Heal the mommy daddy issues, heal the feeling not worthy, heal the um, needing to live up to expectations that aren't even your own, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because that's what it always comes back down to. Because um, this goes into my last question as well. Um, I could talk to you all day. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. You're great. Um, but, anyways. The thing about working on your consciousness and working on being a higher vibe expression of yourself is a lot of a lot of my clients come to me also because they're having their own what they call personal Mandela effects, not just changes in logos, but changes in reality that are like undeniable. Um, Where like maybe they will have a tattoo on one leg and then all of a sudden one day the same tattoo is on the other leg and it like flipped over and they're like, why is that? And um, in hypnosis, it's revealed that um, they had changed their perspective on something. They changed their energy signature because they changed their perspective of something something um, uh, that they saw differently. And so they matched up to another parallel reality or another reality where things happen a little bit different that they got to let their their tattoo on the other leg. So there's a lot of these cases as well, um, what I call leading edge experiencers of reality shifts. In your, in your work with UFOs, you get a lot of cases where they have these reality shifts. Uh, I wouldn't say a lot, but it does turn up. Okay, what are some examples that you've gotten? Um, well, people describe similar incidents. Uh, well, one guy, I mean, real specific, uh, would come back different heights. <laughs> uh, he was his height would change, and I had how much how much of a height change? A couple of inches, but this was not just one person reporting this. This was a number of people, and there are some people who come back and said, "Look, the world is different. You know, I'm in a different world." And they aren't able to articulate it. And I think they're kind of sensing what you're talking about here. And what of, aspects of the world is different did they notice? They weren't able to say anything specifically. So I'm, I, I'm like trying to help them. Because <laughs> I have people drawn to me too in weird coincidental ways that are very much obviously guided. And uh, I feel like I'm on a mission too. And I've had what you're talking about. I mean, there's this one wall where I keep trying to flick this light switch and it's on the other wall. I cannot seem to get it through my head that the light switch is on the other side. And I don't know why. Did you remember the light switch was on a different side than it is there now? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So I wonder about things like that. And if people just kind of like, since they can't explain it, and they're like, well, that obviously, you know, how... How would you ever explain that? That reality can actually shift. <laughs> so well, they just I, accept it. Yeah, people just accept it. Now, see, there, 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 here comes another, another question because when people start doing their spiritual work, their inner work, they start healing the dense issues that you know lowered their frequency and they start kind of lightening up and stuff. Um, a lot of people that, in my work, a lot of people that come to me are going to have a lot of, because they can't go to their doctor, they can't go to anybody else. There's nothing that they can go to to talk about reality shifts in their in their life, where um, they, there is a completely different histories than they remember. Um, there is people that they don't recall seeing. I've had clients who who have friends who they recall had 
more children, but now they have less children. So there's missing people in this reality. You know, just on and on the stories go. And I've had um, conversations with different people in the spiritual work space. And there seems to be two buckets. One bucket is there's no such thing as Mandela effects. It's all delusions, faulty memory. Okay, but they can, but they they just wipe it off, and they won't. They have no explanation for any of the examples that I'll bring up. Like, there is plenty of people, and I've been into forums with thousands of people, and all at the same time, everybody puts in their answer and their story why, and then they read it. So there's no way to influence each other. Where did you remember that Nelson Mandela died in prison, or did he die as the president of South Africa? And then you have two buckets of people who have vivid memory, vivid recall, and they have no skin in the game of lying to each other. Um, you know, I have clients who fly thousands of miles that over, across multiple states just to make sense of their personal Mandela effects um, and their star seed issues and all these other fifth dimensional things that they're working on as well. So all of it's kind of coming in. And um, and on and on the story goes. And so I just, I, you know, somebody wants to be a, a skeptic about multiverse existence and people shifting to different realities based on their consciousness. I can go on and on and on until they go <laughs> blue in the eye with case after case, receipt after receipts, you know, um, you know whatever. And they just kind of go, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And so I'm, like I said earlier, I'll gauge. Okay, it's too much for you. You just stay in your spiritual bubble. There's one reality. But it goes into the sense that there's there's always duality. There's always in in creation in Buddhism, they say everything comes out of nirvana as polarity. So there's a up and a down, a light and a dark, a multiverse and one single universe. So if there are people experiencing multiple realities, then they may also be people who think they only experience one reality and everybody goes to one. So it's gotta be some kind of opposite. Yeah. So, um, you know, what is your thoughts on um, people saying that they really do have experiences of shifting into parallel realities or realities where there is something different than what they and many other people that they know remember yeah i would think it would, you'd be foolish to ignore these stories because they're coming they're, you know a lot of people are having these experiences it's just like the ufos and, uh, yeah and uh i've had a lot of out-of-body experiences and so i am absolutely convinced there's alternate realities and people who are taken on board as young children are often told like, oh, well, this will happen, this might happen, or could go this way or that way. So they get multiple um, options, like it can go this different yeah. ways. Okay. They're kind, of, they're kind of showing like, well, this could be your house. This might be, the, this will probably be the person you're marrying. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and so they're able to see these realities uh, long before they're manifesting, so to speak. Right. So they see the potentials. Okay, I have to really get into this now. We're really getting into um, another aspect before I, I close out. So let's get into these um, quote unquote aliens. Are these um, are these aliens our future self? I think some might be. Some might I, be. Yeah. We, and in what reality are these aliens our future self? Uh, it, there are a number of cases where the ETs do tell people we are you from the future. One day you will look like us and variations of this and that they got into a war and had a real genetic damage and it caused them to lose all their hair and their features and the inability to reproduce. And yes, they are essentially us from the future. And there are a number of cases that seem to say this. And I, you know, I had, yeah, I think that that's possibly true in some of these cases. We right. can see that ETs do have the ability to time travel. It's a wide universe. They're skipping over various realities. Some people, I think, are pulled from one reality to another. You know, we don't right. know. You know, that we, could be part of what's going on in this, some of these cases. Right. I remember um, a seminar that Dara Anka, um, who channels Bashar, said that, you know, he said that, well, if it doesn't work in this reality, we'll just go find another reality and try again. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's interesting. People are very locked in on Earth as being like, this is reality. And really, it's just a piece of it. And you're in this sort of uh, here on Earth when there's so much more um, beyond. Yeah. If people knew that there was life after death and alternate realities and you are an immortal being, we're all connected. I think people would change very quickly. Right, right, right. They have to be conscious. They have to be, have the conscious connection to their higher self um, right. and heal the discord. Uh, that's all what it comes down to. So all this, uh, I mean, and, and this is the thing, if I were to talk to any of um, these quote, quote aliens, I talked to the higher self anyways, but other quote, quote aliens, I would say the, the, the root is they need, people need to be conscious of the nature of reality and the nature of themselves and creation and uh, and heal the discord in their in themselves about that disconnect and and from that um then they can be healthy creators and participants of reality so yeah and the, the thing is is that like like all these different different sources that i come across whether it's through my hypnosis through your work through you know, other res resources like Dolores Cannon, Bashar, all these other things. I've even gone into um, near death experiences. It, just the list goes on all, <laughs> yeah, in the me last. Too. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's kind of, you know, I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, there's a possibility, but start hearing some common, the, some common points is that it's almost like they're trying to change, um, change the outcome that they end up experiencing by going back in time and going to a parallel reality where there's higher vibe spiritual people as a as a, a higher amount of them and then trying to work on that equation and then if they can work on that equation it may change the outcome exactly. it, well, it, yeah. it may yeah it, it may somehow change the outcome maybe the timelines will merge and all of a sudden some of the, you know, but the thing that's interesting about the Dara Anka story is that he says that we, we do, you know, because they exist, it is because they exist from an enlightened spiritual society that they don't necessarily know. We have gone so far in our advancement of spirituality and consciousness that they, Daryl Anka's quote, quote, future self reality is a offshoot of humanity that we, it's, there, are, there are little creations. Yeah. And um, because we have gone so far beyond that, they don't know who the original people, original creators are. So it's, it's really fascinating. It's almost like we're all playing um, sliders, <laughs> sliders in Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. It's an infinite universe. You know, anything can happen it's unlimited so that kind of makes parallel realities almost a sure thing almost a sure uh, thing you know i mean and certainly it's being verified in quantum physics and science itself is meeting up with metaphysics and oh yeah so the same message is coming from all the numerous places. yeah you know whether you're talking to near-death experiencers a lot of this is parallel there yeah, yeah. Well, what tips do you have for people from your work and from your um, your clients that you've studied? What tips do you have for people in in changing times, you know, so that they can, you know, raise their their frequency and get into the higher dimensions of reality? Yeah, I think the whole ET's purpose is to wake people up. So sometimes people will have pretty traumatic experiences. And they're like, I, they kidnapped me. I was scary. And I'm like, well, yeah, they, they, you need to wake up to the fact that this is happening. You need to wake up to who you are. So they will resort to you know, waking you up, which is not, no, no one likes to wake up in the morning. It's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mm -hmm. go back to bed. So waking up is not always easy. And I think that they're doing their best to do it, but, uh, in a very concerted way. Yeah. That really seems to be their main agenda. Right, right. Well, you know, the thing the thing that the higher self continues to tell me in my in my um client sessions with Starseeds and Toku is 
We're getting a lot of help at this time. They sent some really, really ancient souls. Um, so to kind of help you guys figure it out. <laughs> so, okay, Preston, I just had a super, super blast talking to you about your research. I can go on and on. Um, there's so many spiritual elements that are just tying this whole picture together for us. And, um, you know, it's all about the journey anyways. So <laughs> there really is no destination, um, you know, just like Star Trek. So I think, you know, we've really given some new insight into the UFO experiencer phenomenon and maybe even the leading edge experiencer of reality shifts as well. So for everybody else, if you want to look into Preston Denton's work and look at any one of his 30 books and counting, just go to his website, which is Preston, um, P-R-E-S-T-O-N, Denton, which is D-E-N-N-E-T-T, dot Weebly, W E E B L Y dot com. Or you could just Google his name, Preston Denton, and you'll find it as well. So with that, um, thank you kindly for listening to another enlightening conversation. Until next time, blessings. Mm -hmm. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Merkaba Chakras where we talk Buddhism in the fifth dimension. For more information about today's guest, please go to the show description. For more information about Vaughn's metaphysical work, please go to MerkabaChakras.com. The views expressed today are for entertainment purposes and do not necessarily reflect the views of the host or replace any medical or legal advice. Don't forget to subscribe for more interviews about the fifth dimension. Until we meet again, blessings.